3201 is one of the prominent Rotary leaders of her district, highly committed to attain the goals of Rotary. She is a recipient of many awards and recognitions for her service to community. By profession, she is a wellness consultant, life skill coach and general physician with 31 years of medical experience focusing on mind, body, spirit rejuvenation. I welcome Dr. Surya Prabha uh, to deliver her talk on health and wellness for empowering girls. Uh, good evening, uh, distinguished Rotarians and uh, uh, distinguished guests from all over the world. It indeed gives me a great, great pleasure to speak to you. Because once upon a time, even I was a little girl. And all what I am today is because of what was supported and enriched by my parents as well as my teachers, the society, friends, and very many of them. So when it comes to the education and uh, when it comes to the wellness of the human being, especially girls, we need to cater to their mental uh, capabilities as well as to their physical capabilities. Now, when it comes to school support, there are lots of ways which in which Rotary is participating right now through different programs. And uh, they are like adoption of schools, scholarships, water purifiers, computer labs, smart classrooms, toilets. And of course, medical, dental, and hearing uh, um, uh, screenings and uh, checkups, etc. But then I would like to emphasize one thing: like when you are a girl, when you are a young child, when you are just not, I mean, just blooming into a young girl, all that you need is the survival skill. You need to survive. Odds of life, because life is not going to be the same every now and then. And um, of course, uh, during our childhood days, we had uh, plenty of uh, uh, sport and uh, extracurricular activities. I guess because of the present uh, educational curriculum and uh, infrastructure, sports has taken a back seat. And you can see now what is happening is on the videos and on the TV, television, media, etc. We see small children and even adults, etc., who go in for all these sort of online games and then having um, lost lots of money, they just uh, break down and then they end up their lives. Life is a celebration, provided you know how to deal it. I am not going to guarantee that life is going to be a bed of roses, but then you need to prepare. Like, you know, as adults, how we prepare, we need to prepare our family, our children, the society, the children, the, na the neighborhood, the children of different schools, different places. So that together we will grow as a potential nation with lots of empowered girls. And um, when it comes to mental health, uh, you need to advocate the uh, importance of safe touch. Now, when it comes to a young adult, a young toddler, she should be uh, she should be educated on uh, safe touch. Of course, cyber hygiene, just like menstrual hygiene, you need cyber hygiene also. So where you need to uh, restrict your activities on the mobile and other uh, uh, cyber activities. Then leadership, uh, leadership skills which can be advocated and um, mainly financial literacy for girl children and also civic hygiene, you know, because I am very proud to be an Indian and uh, having traveled to few parts over the globe, I feel that um, uh, we have a rich cultural heritage and uh, we uh, in India, need to develop the sense of civic hygiene. Civic is like, you know, with your society, with your society, your social mates, your uh, neighbors, the other people. Though we are advancing technologically and of course we have a great export and all this sort of industrial IT sectors and all that. But when it comes to mental capabilities, I uh, it is not that we are low, but we need more focus on all these things. And um, it was very sad to understand that about uh, out of the 1.63 million illiterate youth, including women, I mean boys and girls, 63% are females, female children, 
over the globe so that means 63% of our youngsters are not being educated i'm telling it on a global perspective so what can we do to uh, improve this so have you said like rotary ventures into different programs and the activities so like you know we need to advocate the importance of literacy so you need increase literacy and uh, another uh, problem which is uh, going with against the girl child education is again about human trafficking you know when the child is not um, uh, educated and uh, when she goes into an adult uh, adolescent there's a vulnerability in her so she can be easily sidetracked and she can be misused also and another thing is women in political representation of course india is gearing up now and um, uh, there needs to be a civic education training for our politicians too because when we address a vast gathering we need to know what we are talking about i'm not against anyone but a little bit of grooming is necessary for uh, political uh, leadership then um, training girls training babies okay like how do you feel when you have the knowledge feel you feel so happy you are able to share something so you need to train the babies from the classrooms like from your montessori or your lkg and um, girl children of course i'm not particularly or particularly talking about only one to class 1 to 5 or the primary but i'm just talking about somebody who is less than 18 so um, some knowledge about safe sex of course of course india of course there is a um, uh, difference of opinion but uh, when it comes to other uh, places over the globe especially the western uh, region of the part they are uh, uh, told about having safe sex which is very important in preventing these girls developing hiv and ha aids and of course late marriage uh, like you know advocating marriage uh, after the uh, after the year of 18, 18 after 18 years and um, like you know when you get a woman educated a girl educated she becomes an educated woman so she could contribute to the economic uh, uh, development of a country also like gross domestic product no the G, uh, gdp also increases income potentials increase and there are lots and i mean supported by unesco lots of ventures which are there all over the globe even which i came to know at a later stage because being a general physician profession we were more medical oriented and since 2008 i became a rotarian then i knew that we could do something uh, which is within our capabilities and joining hands with so many enlightened minds we could create wonders all over the globe and uh, so like this we can bring a sustainability in the uh, existence of the human race by educating a girl child so now the girl child like i have uh, because of i should thank sabrina sir because of uh, rojo proact have conducted few uh, programs on recording uh, in progress i've uh, uh, conducted few programs on uh, menstrual hygiene and um, other social uh, skill development programs for uh, corporation school children here of course for the government school children and you should see the vibe and the positivity and the happiness and the uh intention of learning you know so they're so happy to learn something new and only because of some economic uh, reason uh, they are shelled away from the uh, uh what about say shelled away from the gifts of life so whatever i am today is because of my parents and uh, has said because of my parents my teachers my society my friends and uh, uh, other rotarians and uh, all loving souls so why don't we contribute this to the rest of the children also the way we are happy all ch every child needs to be happy so girl has to be motivated she needs to be educated and um, at home also uh, because our indian society is more patriarchal i have seen in some places i'm not going to um, i mean actually pinpoint uh, a particular state or a particular region but then i say like you know women boys and girls are equal of course i love all children and there's no discrimination between boys and girls because the topic is uh, allotted to me is something about girl child education on the mental and as well as the physical wellness i would like to say even at many homes it's uh, it's seen that um, most of the boys you know see supposing a boy a boy can country or um, consume about 8 to 9 uh, idlis and of course two eggs boiled eggs or whatever 
but a girl needs to take only three or two and only one leg or a half leg so you see the disparity starts from our house so we need as parents as um, educated individuals educated rotarians we need to see that even at our own house so we start small from our house we need to bring in that gender equality depending on the girl's appetite let the girl if she wants to have three eggs let her have so it is you know it is not restricted to the boy eats more the girl eats less and of course things are changing now and when it comes to the uh, relationship act aspect of uh, thing the gender discrimination has reduced very much and now i see youngsters young men supporting young women and you know it's coming the globe is becoming happy on one side of course a uh, peace and um, uh, instability on the other side due to vested interests like you know because man becomes very greedy he wants everything and then of course he destroys things in life so when it comes to education of girls we need to con- uh, focus on uh, many points like basic health and wellness of a female child is where she is advised as i told you safe touch from school one like five years because generally the girls who are um, uh, vulnerable for these sort of uh, um, sexual uh, uh, crimes are children very small children because when a child is five to six years she doesn't know what is being done to her then what happens it becomes a habit and then of course she thinks it's normal with everyone okay and then she gets abused so we need to of course i am trained in that also by you know so through the indian medical association i had a small training where you can advocate about safe sex to children in the way that they don't get hurt up you know because young minds so you they are very raw so you cannot just uh, rush in your ideas and frighten them off because later they should have a happy uh, married life too so we need to do that then after that every uh, sports has to be um, advocated in school physical activity is very important and when you do you when you have your physical activities like yoga pranayama and all the rest of the things whatever it is some game or something so that you know you stress out your uh, uh, excess baggage of uh, bad energy in a positive way where you also get again rejuvenated so physical activity is very important not on and uh, just not studying sitting on the computers and going to school like in you know, monotonous going and coming back and all that will help uh, it will not help the girl child or any child for that matter so and then peer a uh, peer pressure how to handle peer relationships how you get of course most of these days are uh, schools are co education schools and uh, they um, they have lots of programs going on but then of course in the uh, privileged schools when it comes to the government schools it needs to be um, uh, um propagated the uh, better and the has rotarians we are doing our best of course if the government in, in, intervenes then i think we could do wonders and of course then um uh, prevention of drug abuse so that is also very uh, prominent amongst children and uh, girl children so lots of uh, varieties of drugs even as doctors we don't know what they are narcotic drugs which are being advocated to small children in the say by saying telling them that uh, their memory power increases so only when a child gets in advantage okay i'm not supposed to use this okay and in case somebody pressurizes her for something she needs somebody to tell and that person generally happens to be the mother father or the teacher because the peer is again equally inexperienced like the child so naturally the parents must be very supportive the teacher should be supportive in the moment in a classroom they see that there is a student lagging behind and what is and if she's having any problem they need to address of course um an address and in fact i am in touch with some of the happy schools uh, i uh, we adopted in, from our satellite uh, club and uh, the relationship is going on past uh, 2015 and um, many teachers are my good friends and uh, now and then we pitch in conduct programs and uh, they were very sorry to tell now uh, the uh, sort of substance uh, in uh, usage as well as um, most of the children get depressed and um, girl children especially and uh, when it is you know see because there's an uh, hormonal uh, interplay a hormonal flux in our body as soon as we menstruate and then things come it's all natural but then how are we going to control and guide them we cannot say this is wrong that is wrong but we need to tell them that whatever focus they have in their life needs to be uh, pushed forward besides enjoying the uh, adolescent uh, age also so many children many girls especially i um, mean because of um, relationship issues etc um, they get depressed 
many of them commit suicide the suicide rate has increased amidst students okay only it was like business people and sometimes you know are very sick people but nowadays it's not like that because of lack of financial literacy girls and boys who during i mean they just play in these rummy and all the rest of the games and they are not able to um say no i mean get to know from anyone okay so like you know you need to produce a girls more stronger so life is not about always winning at the first chance it is like you know when you are into sports you know that you cannot get a cup or a medal just on the day one you need to run 100 times to win once so you know even if you fall down you need to get up so these sort of small basic things has to be educated uh, i mean it has to be uh, made known to the girl children and like when they have a problem they need to uh, uh, address it to the proper source so a proper source in the sense there should be some sort of a uh, teacher exclusively for well being in most of all the schools uh, who could address the uh, child's uh, problem without discriminating or labeling the child just imagine now supposing each one of us carry a label in our head you know most of the schools sometimes they brand the child saying that she is this she is that it's not like that all of us have committed small mistakes big mistakes mistakes and with those ex- uh, mistakes and our experiences we have gained maturity and we are able to contribute it's not that we are all uh, totally uh, what say um mistake free all of us have committed mistakes but we were um what to say uh hell we were uh, told it's okay you can get up and all this needs to start from the age 1 to 7 of course 1 2 2 3 you're at home but even as a toddler's mother we need to tell them many things you know like you know when they need to advocate independence when they need to do something on their own and by 7 years the brain wiring is very potential it's just rapid the uh, neuron uh, wiring is very rapid and uh, the child picks up so when you are a mother or a school i mean at school most of the children spend 5 to 7 years at school they start going to school so the school teachers i still remember my uh, montessori uh, class teacher saldana and uh, ms saldana she was from kochin and i owe everything to her she was i was a very naughty child and uh, she was so productive you know she used to channel my energy into something very positive and i'm very grateful to her to whatever i am today so when it comes to uh, motivating a child you should know how to transform that energy so you know instead of branding the child a female child or a male child for that matter you're saying that you've done this that and um, so you know that actually destroys the other skills and when as a toddler you know you see children scribbling sometimes you know children go scribble on the walls actually it is because of the neuronal activity and when you hit the child or you going to just tell that what you did is wrong what happens is the child you know gets himself or herself restricted and the neuronal wiring is inhibited so what i tell the parents you just give them plain papers even newspapers which you finished reading let them do it and if at all they scratch on a wall you can always repaint it but once you scratch on your child's mind it's very difficult because children nurture children hold grudges all of us have no and with age we have mellowed but young children it pulls them back because you are already set a label saying that hey you are a farmer's child you are a farmer you are so don't label just every human being got the equal right to have good food good education and uh, a good place to sleep so you know a society or a country or a nation becomes successful only when all these things are being advocated and even our uh, government of india has lots of programs like the a uh, beti uh, bachao or beti padao so that was started in 2015 a uh, mission shakti by government of india for advocating um, literacy for children and um, uh, poma poma prohibition of child marriage act that was from 2016 saying that uh, children cannot be uh, married uh, below 18 years then of course you have the icds which is an in, uh, india's integrated child development service which was started in 1975 of course again now it's clubbed with the anganwadi services at the rural areas and of course you have the unicef always holding our hands un children emergency fund and that was started in the year 1946 and um, of course uh, apoxo which is again protection of child uh, uh, children and uh, from sexual offense that was started in uh, 2012 so like you know basically we need to see that the girl is empowered empowered with financial resources okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. Um, Dr. Su- yes, I think uh, uh, very nicely you have uh, 
uh, elaborated on the topic can you just uh, uh, summarize yeah, actually, yeah so what i say is like you know when it comes to girl child education there should be new government policies which advocate few of the points which i have told and i think there are better listening uh, uh, senior rotarians and of course uh, uh, government officials who could implement this because with the seal from the government it can be implemented through the 3000 schools in tamil nadu which i could do for five okay so like you know government new government policies should be uh, introduced and it has to be advocated so like rotary along with the government uh, we could uh, do a lot of uh, wonders for the young children so i thank the uh, august audience for giving me this opportunity to talk and uh, what best i know i have shared because i was also once upon a time a young girl child thank you very much thank you rotarian dr surya prabha ma'am you, you very nicely uh, put together how a child has to be holistically managed holistic health is very important it's not just physical it is also mental emotional social and of course spiritual uh, how we have to understand a child's needs about safety and safe touch about the cyber hygiene menstrual hygiene also you went into uh, how uh, peer pressures can uh, affect them and uh, how depression can put them down um and uh, economical uh, literacy financial literacy uh, also about political leadership for children you very nicely put uh, put in all the points about physical health you also mentioned about yoga pranayamas which can be which can go a long way in help improving the holistic health of children so thank you doctor for that uh, very nice uh, talk um uh, i think we will uh, go on to the next topic for the day on leadership development for employment of girls by rotarian dr shirley of ri district 31 uh, 3211 so dr shirley uh, is a general physician retired from kerala government health services as medical superintendent she is an active leader of ima in this area and associated with many social organizations with her irresistible passion for community service she initiates a number of medical camps every month presently she is the president of rotary club of haripat welcome uh, dr shali and she would be talking on leadership development for employment of girls good evening all can you hear me yes 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 doctor yes. Uh, yes ladies and gentlemen today i am honored to address the crucial theme of leadership development in the context of girls empowerment it is our collective responsibility to foster leadership skills in young girls dismantling gender barriers that have long restricted their access to leadership roles fostering leadership skills in young girls is not just an investment in their future it is an investment in the future of our communities and the world at large through mentorship programs leadership work- workshops and opportunities for hands on experience we can nurture the confidence and capabilities that will empower girls to lead with the resilience and mission simultaneously Uh, breaking gender barriers in leadership roles is a necessary stride toward equality let us challenge preconceived notions and stereotypes that have confined girls to specific roles by providing equal opportunities and dismantling systemic obstacles we create a pathway for girls to ascend to leadership positions and contribute their unique perspectives and talents in conclusion as we embark on this journey of girls empowerment let us prioritize the development of leadership skills and actively work to dismantle gender barriers by doing so we pave the way for a more inclusive diverse and equitable future thank you yes uh thank you uh, dr shali for that very 
uh, short and uh, uh, sweet, I should say, description of how equal opportunity should be given to girls and how leadership uh, qualities are very essential for uh, girls to become to uh, to prove themselves in the society. So thank you, Dr. Shirley. And uh, next we have uh, with us uh, Dr. Professor Aisha of RID 3211. She would be talking on encouraging technology and innovation for employment of girls. I will uh, briefly introduce Dr. Aisha. Dr. Aisha is principal of IHRD College of Patambi in Kerala. She is an educationalist, a uh, technocrat in computer application, a versatile writer, a champion of organic farming, and passionate in serving the community. She is a recipient of several awards and recognitions for her social interventions and contribution to the community. Welcome, Dr. Aisha. Dr. Aisha, uh, your, your voice is not clear. Can you come closer? Maybe um, talk nearer to the computer or the laptop. Yes. Dr. Aisha, you are uh, muted. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Dr. Uh, Su uh, Supriya, we know this has come. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, after I Dr. Aisha, I will uh, ask Dr. Supriya to talk. Dr. Aisha? Okay, shall I talk? Yes, yes, please. Dr. Aisha? Yes. yes, you can switch off the video and talk because I think your uh, signal is poor. Without, uh, without the video, you can just give the audio. Okay. Dr. Aisha, you're muted. They're not hearing you. Okay. Ah, okay audible? was heard. The word okay was heard. Just talk the same way. We can hear you. Today, I stand before you to share light on a topic that is not only crucial for the progress of our society, but also for the empowerment of half of our population, the employment of girls in the fields of technology and innovation. In recent years, there has been a growing recognition of the importance of gender diversity in the workplace, especially in sectors that are driving the future, such as technology and innovation. That is, we have a lot of examples in Kerala. Kerala government provides many opportunities for technological innovations like KDS, start Kerala State Startup Mission, then Technoparks, Infoparks, Techno Cities, etc. In India, also, there are many opportunities for excelling for women. Then, educating women is also important. That is giving innovations and uh, exposure to technology help them to achieve more skills and to get employment. We, we have a lot of examples like from uh, local pilots to pilots, then the missile beam of India. Dr. Tessie Thomas achieved that position because of her technological education. And however, despite the progress we have made, there is still a significant gender gap in, the in these fields with women being 
under represented in technical roles and leadership positions i want to talk about why it is essential to encourage technology and innovation for the employment of girls and how we can work towards achieving this goal firstly let us consider the significance of technology and innovation in today's world we live in an era where technology is rapidly advancing transforming every aspects of our life from artificial intelligence to blockchain to biotechnology technological advancements are shaping the future and creating new opportunities to ensure that our society benefits from these advancements it is essential to have diverse perspectives and voices at the table by engaging girls to pursue careers in technology and innovation we can tap into a pool of talent that is currently underutilized bringing fresh ideas and insights to the table so how can we encourage girls to pursue careers in technology and innovation one of the most crucial steps is to provide them with access to quality education in stem subjects that is science technology engineering and mathematics by starting early and fostering an interest in these subjects we can lay the foundation for future success i think they need to try in te technology related fields mentorship was placed a crucial role in encouraging girls to pursue careers in technology and innovation by connecting them with the female mentors who are successful in these fields we can provide them with guidance support and inspiration seeing women who have succeeded in related careers can girls envision themselves in similar roles and overcome any doubts or barriers they dr aisha suddenly uh, you you are not audible dr aisha i think uh, is not uh, there in connection some internet uh, problem i suppose dr aisha i think uh, uh, unfortunately dr aisha is not in connection because of some internet uh, issues so she very nicely elaborated on encouraging girls in stem fields like science technology engineering and mathematics and also leveraging technology for girls empowerment uh, startup opportunities she also gave examples of female mentors who can be um, uh, setting example for young minds to take up um, fields technical fields there is always an under representation of women in technical fields so very nicely dr aisha brought out uh, uh, these points and let us focus on these points thank you uh, to thank you dr aisha and uh, let us move on to the next topic for the day uh, by dr supriya she, she was uh, not in some time before i think now she has come in professor dr supriya vinod i already introduced Supriya's? her as a, yes dr supriya i introduced her as a, and uh, yeah dr it supriya. is an honor and a very happy uh, evening today as i've been given this wonderful opportunity to uh, share uh, dias with uh, uh, elite panelists in this uh, work workshop or uh, maybe the online webinar organized by rojo provax uh, thank you uh, rotarian shabrinath sir for this uh, opportunity that you have given me i am grateful to you and i think i'm blessed 
because every year you don't miss this opportunity or if miss to give me this opportunity to which be a part of your uh, panel or even for the joint projects of rojo proact and uh, good evening dr vanaja good evening it's yes. nice to meet you also online yeah. uh, this uh, topic is very close to heart because uh, being an academician for almost 28 years uh, uh this has been uh, a topic that is very close to my heart and uh, this has always been a topic of discussion to be professionally or on a personal uh, front uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, today uh, we gather to uh, talk about or discuss about the importance of quality education for girls and how can education empower girls and how do we overcome the challenges in uh, girls education now and uh, today um, this topic uh, actually uh, reminds me of uh, uh, dr nelson mandela's uh, saying on education he says education is a very powerful tool with which you can change the world and uh, education definitely empowers girls enabling them to make uh, informed decisions develop critical thinking skills and become active contributors to their communities and also education promotes uh, gender equality by uh, challenging the stereotypes and uh, the discriminative pra discriminating practices that hinder uh, girls progress the quality education is not merely a privilege but it is a fundamental right that can transform the lives of these girls and uh, when it comes to girls this importance magnifies as it becomes a catalyst for societal development too in the realm of girls education this uh, significance of quality education cannot be overstated it uh, equips equips the girls with the knowledge and skills that they need to break barriers challenge stereotypes and contribute meaningfully to their communities whatever stream of education they have chosen it serves as a powerful tool opening doors to various opportunities and empowering them to dream beyond their traditional roles we have as a society fixed upon girls certain traditional roles and we have made them believe that this is what they are suitable for education definitely will break that barrier however this journey towards girls education is not without challenges and uh, societal norms the economic disparities and cultural bias often they act as uh, formidable obstacles overcoming these challenges requires a collective effort not only from the educators but also from the government from the policy makers fostering inclusive policies dismantling the stereotypes and ensuring access to quality educational resource for all the girls regardless of their economic background uh, it is uh, not very easy to uh, break that uh, stereotype but it takes time and i think uh, we have come a long way because this panel itself has so many women participants and women panelists more in number so that itself shows that we we have come a long way where we have started discussing about this in open forums and women join hands to help uh, others grow so uh, you know there are uh, certain points which i uh, feel i need to discuss here and uh, how can we promote uh, girl education uh, the improving the existing uh, educational infrastructure and the quality of education alone is not enough appointment of qualified teachers preferably female in the government sector in higher education if you see the number of the uh, students girl students who have enrolled has only been on the rise in the last decade and today we find more girls in our classrooms in higher education but this is not the case when it comes to schools especially when it comes to government schools where accessible education or a safe environment is lacking so making schools more accessible by increasing their number or ensuring safe ways of com commuting for the children for the girl children and also in ensuring a safe environment within the uh, school or the within the campus is a very important uh, thing which the uh, which the policy makers have to remember creating awareness um, among parents too on the importance of girl child education forms a very important uh, part of this and uh, personally i have had inspiring parents in uh, you know putting back uh, their ideas on marrying the girls earlier uh, before uh, 18 many parents who come to me with the admission uh, process uh, completed in their hand also give a, 
uh, request saying that within a year we would like to get our girls married because she's going to turn 19 and she's going to complete her teen and she should be married before 20th because that is the tradition so it takes a lot of effort from academicians to convince them and to counsel the parents so it is very important that we have parental support too in this regard many parents if they are educated they can understand and there is the Uh, harmony uh, at home as well as uh, you know you are, it is very easy for us to carry out the academic process but uh, when parents are themselves not educated it becomes a great challenge for us so we have to take the help of some mediators or educational counselors to bring these children back into the educational stream and we have succeeded as far as the government sector is concerned for the last 20 years i have seen this rise in uh, girls enrolling in the higher education even after they are married so in spite of uh, traditional compulsion even if they are married we counsel them to continue their education so that they have uh, empowered life beyond their uh, families so this is uh, one way i think that we all need to join hands especially through rotary we can join hands in increasing the literacy of the girl child so when it comes to literacy why do we have to talk specifically about a girl child literacy is a right education is a right and it empowerment can never happen without education and mm. without education there is not going to be employment and without education and employment there is not going to be empowerment so thank you once again for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my view dr supriya you are muted yes, you're muted you muted ah uh, yes just uh, the concluding remark you can uh, you told something that got uh, cut the last part how can we promote girl education strategies to promote girl education is it is that much yeah just uh, the yeah, last that's sentence i was talking about uh, you know improving educational infrastructure and quality education because policy makers alone uh, cannot make uh, decisions on this because how many our policies we have governmental policies that are implemented ultimately at the grassroots level it is the parental cooperation and uh, the motivation of the child herself to ensure that education is a continuous process and to give her education employment and thereby empowerment because we can never separate empowerment from education and um, employment without without the two e's you can never have empowerment so that is what i was trying to say thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity to share my views thank you supriya for that very vibrant uh, talk on how education can help uh, girls become empowered so uh, education employment and empowerment all go hand in hand you very nicely put it across and how to overcome issues of early marriage with parental support and how education after marriage can be a great boon to girls very nicely uh, you put in all these points she, i already introduced uh, dr supriya that she has three decades of uh, professional experience and uh, she is also principal of the mother teresa pg and research institute of health sciences government of pondicherry and she is a very very good friend of mine at pondi so <laughs> thank you dr supriya and uh, i think we are now coming to the last uh, topic of the day uh, collaborative efforts for empowerment of girls by uh, dr tina Anthony D G N Rotarian Doctor Tina Anthony. The very fact uh, that uh, uh, we have a, a district governor, woman district governor, with us shows that women are uh, in the route, in the path to uh, empowerment. So about uh, Doctor uh, Tina Anthony, she is the district governor for R I D three two double one in two thousand twenty five twenty six. she is the first lady district governor of the district and in the rotary world of kerala so she has implemented many women centric projects including empowering 100 women through skill development in tailoring and setting up stitching units uh, she has built homes for women distributed 750 water filters to anganwadis and uh, uh, please uh, well uh, put your hands to welcome Dr. Tina Anthony. She will be thank you. Thank collaborative you. efforts for empowerment 
of girls uh, today. Thank you. Thank you so much for the generous introduction. And greetings to each one of you as we mark January 24th as the Girl Empowering Day, Girl Child Day. And an empowered uh, girl is needed for a better future, for a better world. Uh, and I just returned from another collaborative uh, function that was a collaboration between the Weissman and Rotary. And I think collaborative efforts are the way forward now. Uh, Rotary clubs can play a significant role in the empowerment of girls through various uh, collaborative initiatives. I'll just spell out a few. One would be educational initiatives. We could, uh, Rotary clubs could establish programs or educational grants, especially for girls. This could include funding for school fees, books, and other educational resources. The next step, of course, would be vocational training programs. A Rotary clubs could collaborate with local organizations and vocational training institutes to provide skill development programs for young girls in areas such as entrepreneurship, technology, and other relevant fields. Health and san sanitation projects. We could undertake projects that focus on women's health and sanitation. This could involve organizing health camps, providing access to hygiene products, and promoting awareness about health care issues. The next would be leadership development. We can facilitate leadership development program for young girls to enhance their leadership skills and confidence. Workshops, seminars, mentorship programs that can be organized to support women in leadership roles. And of course, let us not forget that conduct we can conduct awareness campaigns on gender equality, women's rights, and related issues. This is to foster a more inclusive and supportive community. Networking and mentorship. Establish mentorship programs that connect experienced professionals with young girls who have stars in their eyes who seek guidance in a, in a particular field. Networking events can also help women build valuable connections. We just spoke about safe spaces and support services for women. And I think women, young girls should be made aware about, uh, about safety, personal safety, about their privacy. This could happen in schools and colleges too. Technology and digital literacy. We can promote initiatives that focus on enhancing women's digital literacy and access to technology. This can include computer literacy programs, internet access projects, programs on artificial intelligence. In fact, in our district, one of our past district governors is conducting such a course. Then advocacy and policy initiatives. You know, the Nirbhaya uh, rules came into place only because of the, uh, you know, the reaction of the public, particularly women, to the gruesome rape. And because of that, the laws were changed. So advocacy can be brought about and we can collaborate with local authorities, with the police and organizations to advocate for policies that promote gender equality and girls' empowerment. And definitely celebrate women's achievements. Recognize and celebrate the achievements of girls in various fields through awards and events. This not only motivates young girls, but also inspires them to strive for success. Partnerships with the other NGOs and government agencies. We can establish partnerships with other uh, NGOs, government agencies, and other community groups working towards women's empowerment. Remember, collective efforts often have a more significant impact. And the government of India also has a number of key initiatives that was mentioned before, Beti uh, Bachao Beti Padhao Yojana, an initiative to promote the importance of girl-child education and gender equality. We have a digital gender atlas, which is a platform that highlights gender disparities uh, in, 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 in India. And uh, uh, we have a national crash scheme for children of working uh, mothers. It aims to provide a safe and secure uh, environment for children of working mothers. We have something called the Sukanya Samardhi Yojana, 
This is a small saving scheme designed exclusively for the girl child to encourage savings for her education. And, and we could promote this among, you know, self-help groups. And there are a number of the skill development initiatives are there. The government has a number of skill development initiatives to enhance the employability of women. And uh, digital literacy pro, uh, programs are also conducted by the program by the government. And of course, we need to, uh, you know, uh, advocate that women have their own exclusive helpline, one eight one, toll free helpline that uh, provides twenty four by seven support to women in trust distress. Maybe girl children would know about that, so that if their mothers are in distress, they would know whom to approach. And Rotary Clubs can leverage their network. We have very deep network, our resources, and commitment to community service to make a lasting impact on girls' empowerment. It's crucial to collaborate with local stakeholders and tailor initiatives to the specific needs and context of the community. These were some of the uh, thoughts that I gathered uh, uh, during the day, and it was a pleasure. It's, it's really my honor and privilege to share some of my thoughts with this very enlightened panel. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share this all this with you. And I wish the very best, uh, particularly Professor Shabarinath, who is uh, leading from the front. We want more men like him uh, to light up path as we go forward. Thank you, Professor Shabarinath, for all the wonderful work you're Very doing. Good. And once again, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Tina Anthony, for the very uh, comprehensive, uh, enlightening talk on how um rotary uh, ro how rotary clubs can support girls initiatives how educational aids vocational training health and uh, sanitation uh, awareness programs camps and how leadership development can be encouraged workshops mentorships awareness camps and courses that are available uh, in the government sector and uh, how we should also not forget to recognize and celebrate uh, the success of uh, girls and um, how by partnership with uh, other NGOs and also with government, we can uh, bring about a very nice uh, lasting impact uh, on the development of uh, women. So these were very nicely put across by you. Thank you, Dr. Tina, for that. And so now that we have discussed on education, health and wellness, leadership development, technology and innovation and community outreach by five uh, distinguished uh, uh, speakers uh, who had uh, brought out all the uh, points very nicely. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, we will go on to the panel discussion. We'll listen to the uh, participants and uh, people who have uh, some questions to ask. Um, so, uh, shall we move on to the panel discussion, sir, Professor, Doctor? Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. Okay. Let us also listen to people from abroad attending this program. Yeah. Yes. So the um, we uh, we will have the panelists, all the five speakers as panelists, and also Doctor. Uh, Sabrinath is there, and um, also the uh, we had uh, uh, our uh, district governor uh, who spoke to us, who inaugurated the session, Rotarian Dr. Sumitran. Uh, so, uh, with with the, all of these people, we'll initiate the panel. So, uh, as you all know, girls uh, when girls are educated. Their countries become stronger and more prosperous. These were the words of uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, and if one man can destroy everything, why can't one girl change it? That's Malala who said that. And uh, give the girl the right shoes and she can conquer the world. That was Marilyn Monroe. And on this uh, National Girls Day, let's celebrate the strength, resilience and limitless potential of every girl. May we empower and uplift them to reach for the stars and shape a future filled with equality and opportunities. I call upon um, uh, the some of the international participants who are there with us. 
पीडीजी रोटेरियन शेली ओका बे टू जस्ट गिव अ रिमार्क्स रोटेरियन शेली ओका बे यस हेलो डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नर शेली ओका बाई फ्रॉम मैडागास्कर डिस्ट्रिक्ट नाइन डबल टू जीरो I am also a first lady in my gover- govern as a governor in my district. I mean, I was twenty eighteen nineteen. So um, I was just uh, writing that I have to leave. So thanks for giving me the floor. Well, concerning the women, um, the girls' empowerment, we really need well, we ladies and gents. Let's say that not only ladies. <coughs> we really need to. to help the girls uh to move on to go forward and uh, to do something for them especially when there is a uh, girls in the villages in all villages in all around the world as in india as in madagascar uh and especially um well we we notice this in madagascar that um it's concerning the girls in the villages and in the poor villages uh concerning their menstrual problems uh concerning the latrines and everything so um, that's the point a very delicate point and um, as rutarians in all over the world we we really need to do something for them so so they can move on and they can be on her feet let's say that thank you and thanks for the wonderful seminar hope to attend another one with you all and uh, have a nice evening and have a nice year of rotary and a civil year of 2024 thanks thank you uh, <coughs> uh dr shelly okabe a past district governor from madagascar so i now call upon rotarian anita rambelo the officer in charge of dei from madagascar rotary district 9220 rotary nanita rombello is she there i hello? think she's there because yes yeah she's there hello 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 yes, yes welcome yes. Uh, rotary <laughs> nanita yeah uh, i'm very happy to assist at the webinar and um um i have not um, many things to tell but uh, i um you you under, you hear me yes we do hear you please talk please continue we are listening i am uh, one word deadly to the the program to Okay, I shall tell before. But uh, in Madagascar, I think um, the the girl, uh, the it's very important um, to the education. Uh, especially in the in the provinces of Madagascar, because they they don't go to school. um and uh, it's uh, it's important to to give them the the program that you the project you are muted uh, uh rotarian rambalo anita i don't know what are you Are you talking? I know. Have you finished? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anita, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So uh, thank you for you, you joining us. Me? You hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now you are audible. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Uh, both uh, Rotary and Shelly and. Uh, Rotarian Anita Rambello from Madagascar had joined and uh, uh, given their remarks. Uh, let's welcome Rotarian Sharmila from London. She is there in the uh, among the participants. Can we listen to Rotarian Sharmila?
Rotating Shamila. I think uh, she's not there. All right. Among the audience, uh, can 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 we open uh, open for uh, taking questions? Anybody has any questions for the panelists? The as I am, as, as I am, Professor Lohidan uh, from Rotary Club of Haripat. I I I need to supplement uh, Professor Supri Minot. Uh, she belongs belongs to my fraternity, and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The first first prime minister of India said that if you educate a man, you educate an individual. However, if you educate a woman, you educate a whole family. And women empowerment means mother India empowerment. Pandit Nehru ji told like that. We are empowering means we are empowering uh, women means we are empowering. Mother India. mother India, mother India, because take it out of our our population structure, majority is women. In a democracy, also very powerful. Uh, now nowadays, the prime minister passed a, a, a legislature in our in our parliament that uh, women will be given more representation in our lawmaking bodies. A very 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 powerful decision. And uh, the empowerment is definitely will happen in future because when we are getting power, then only we can empower. <laughs> power empower means itself is power, political power, economic power, and social power. All type of power we have to acquire. Women will be empowered in such a manner. No, all okay. So we are very very hopeful about the future of our women, especially in India. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Logitin, uh, for this uh, for those enlightening words. Mm, uh, very nicely, you put in how uh, empowering women can be an empowerment to Mother India, and about uh, the representation in politics. Soon, thirty-three percent will become fifty percent, I suppose, uh, because that's the fair fair deal. And um, any other uh, remarks or doubts, any questions from the other participants? I see one uh, Rotarian, Henry Amalraj. Yes. Come, come on. Rotarian Henry Amalraj. You're muted. Uh, uh, good, good evening. Good evening, everybody. I am yes. very happy by attending this wonderful uh, seminar on uh, on behalf of uh, Girls' Day. Uh, I'm very happy uh, in our uh, district, District 3201, Rudy District 3201, India. Uh, we are having nearly 115 schools, uh, internet clubs. We are having internet clubs in 115 schools. Out of that, uh, there are many uh, girls' schools, uh, particularly in India. There are many girls, one one of our schools having strength of 2,500 plus girls in uh, government schools. They are all lack of many facilities like uh, insulator and other hygiene toilets. Uh, we, as a Rotary, as a Rotarian, uh, we provide maximum to the girls schools in our district even uh, dr uh, uh, suri prabha madam also known about these activities so it is a very beautiful session i understand and i observe many things from this session in our district there are uh, schools and we organize some uh, forum for interact groups district interact council in that this year we the maximum Leaders uh, nominated by girls only. 75% of the girls occupied the leadership position. And we have selected the next year team also. In the next year team, 90% of the uh, team uh, consists of girls. So I am very happy. Girls are now uh, uh, very much uh, eagerly want uh, leadership uh, skills. So uh, this seminar 
I uh, noted many points by the doctors. Thank you very much for the organizer. I am very happy by attending this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for yeah, those I very uh, another appreciative and encouraging words. Chandra, Chandra Kala from Pondicherry. Yeah. <laughs> she is a very active Rotarian. I don't know why she is silent. Dr. Chandra, Chandra Kala, please. Rotarian Chandra Kala. Uh, she has uh, raised hand. Yes. Come on. You are come on. mute. You are in mute. Chandra Kala, unmute. please unmute and talk. One minute. Yeah. Now again it is muted. Please unmute and talk. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sabrina, the organizer, the panel coordinator, Dr. Vanaja, ma'am, and panel speakers. Uh, and participants, good evening to one and all. And thanks for the comment uh, uh, by Dr. Sabrina, I'm an activitarian. I was just observing, sir. So uh, it's very interesting to hear the uh, good speakers and with the, with the coordination of Dr. Vanaja, ma'am, uh, as usual. And uh, I was really uh, enlightened with uh, lots of ideas. See, uh, I feel as uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Supriya said and Dr. Henry, everybody said nowadays girls are given lots of uh, um, uh, privileges like uh, schools, uh, from the schools, like uh, uh, sanitary napkins where the absenteeism is reduced and because of the good toilets, the absenteeism is reduced. So all girl children started coming to schools regularly and doing the education. But in spite of having so many programs, the Rotarians are doing and the government is also taking care of all these things, then why why still we are talking about the girls' empowerment and all those things? I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> if I'm not wrong, I can I can tell my uh, idea, ma'am. Shall I? Yeah. Please. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I feel uh, the equality is shared. The equality at home. Uh, with the male children, uh, everything is shared, equal food, equal education, equal facilities, equal rights, everything is shared. But the empowerment comes, if I'm not wrong, when she is taking a decision at home, from the home, it starts from the home. And many women are in a good, very good positions in taking the uh, uh, decisions in CEO positions and uh, managing directors and in uh, still higher positions. But why the empowerment is still uh, being a topic on women or the girls? I feel that empowerment should start from the uh, home. The empowerment is that I believe the decisions can be taken or the discussion can be taken, I mean, can be uh, done at home. But when they're all listening to the uh, girl, children or uh, women at home, from the home, then the empowerment starts. It's only when you became a CEO, there is no other go for other junior uh, uh, people to listen to uh, that particular uh, lady officer. But it should start from the house and, and in the society. That's what uh, I feel. The empowerment should start in the business. I hope you all agree with me. You're right. Idea. Thank yes, you. Definitely, definitely. Uh, when there is a girl and a boy, both should be encouraged to do all activities in a similar way instead of uh, considering the gender to, to take up activities, like, for example, household work or academics, everything should be equally uh, given to both uh, both the siblings. So that way, empowerment will start right from home. Yes. There is, uh, I feel, one, I feel that, is, that has been done. That has been done. That has been done. But the empowerment should start. Uh, yes, uh, doc, yes, uh, Rotarian uh, Chandra Kala, ma'am. It is happening in the higher socioeconomic homes. But in the lower socioeconomic um, uh, uh, families, which is more than 75%, still uh, the disparity exists. At, uh, it starts at home. So at I think, home, that, uh, I yes. think the Rotary should work on that, ma'am. And work more on awareness that. Creating awareness. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Thank uh, you. Uh, I think one Mr. Mohan Das Tambi is raising hands. Yes, sir. Please unmute and talk, sir. Good evening, man and all. First of all, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Klingberg uh, Haripad for conducting this webinar, and uh, Professor Sabrina and uh, the coordinator Dr. Vanaja and other all other doctors, especially lady doctors. Uh, Dr. Supriya, Dr. Surya, Dr. Shirley, Dr. Tina, Dr. Aisha, all, all doctors, they have given a very good uh, uh, seminar, very good presentation on, uh, on their experiences and the social awareness they have uh, about the ideas, what, what are the ideas we have to provide for the empowerment of girls. And the social awareness, what we have to do, social responsibility, what we have to do, what the parents have to do, what are the policies has to be made by the government and the system, and how the education has be uh, can be given, and the, what all support can be given for the for getting them uh, the income, for getting them a job, like that. Many, 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 many areas covered. And I'm I'm uh, taking this opportunity to congratulate all those. Uh, uh, who are present here and who have given a very, very good uh, informative seminar on this thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, we are coming to the end of yes, the yes. panel discussion. Yes. And uh, uh, the empowered woman. The empowered woman is powerful beyond measure and beautiful beyond description. These are words of Steve Maraboli. And I think uh, girls should never be afraid to be smart. And when girls are educated, their countries become stronger and more prosperous. So with these uh, uh, concluding words, I thank uh, Professor Dr. Sabri Nath. Uh, and also Rotary Club of Haripath for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, be the uh, coordinator for the program. And I thank all the speakers uh, who, who gave very uh, nice enlightening talks uh, uh, and um, also the participants who gave very beautiful remarks on this uh, very nice uh, uh, discussions. Um, uh, over to Professor Dr. Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for conducting such a wonderful way. I, I just want to add some more things to uh, the discussions there. Rotarian uh, 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 Chandra was uh, suggesting that it should happen from homes. Naturally, it will happen when the girl is educated and the girl is employed and the girl is having that economic power she will get power for everything. So even in uh, that uh, lower strata, girls get educated, they get empowered. They get a job, then they will become the masters of the house. <laughs> they will be head. Then uh, for uh, example, for the collaborative action, now for the last, uh, we are uh, Rotary Club of Harry Pot is having a self-defense program for girls in collaboration with the uh, uh, government. Government is providing for the training and Rotary Club of Haripad is giving food and refreshments to the children. So a 10 days program is going on. So like that, there are so many avenues where uh, we can collaborate and make things happen. Without our collaboration, even there is some funding that may not work out. So when you also join, we can do much beyond what we can alone do. So that's a living example. Uh, congratulations to Dr. Rotarian, Dr. Vanaja Vaidinathan for perfectly coordinating the panel presentations and interactive session. We are deeply indebted to the panelists for their excellent uh, presentations. Wonderful and coordination. To the active involvement of the participants in the interactive session. Now I request Rotarian Bina J. Prakash, the president elect of RC Helipart, to propose word of thanks. Bina, please. Rotarian Bina, please. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Roger Prayer, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each one of you who joined us for this international webinar on girls' empowerment. It was a truly enlightening evening filled with insights and discussions aimed at fostering positive change. 
first of all our sincere appreciation goes to professor rotarian k sabarina the brain and spine of this wonderful platform he is the general coordinator of rojo proact thank you sir for delivering warm welcome that set the tone for the event a special thank you to rotarian dr g sumitran governor rotary district 3211 for inaugurating the webinar and inspiring us with his encouraging words we are really honored sir the panel presentations were a highlight of the program we are grateful to rotarian dr vanaja vaidhinathan rotarian professor dr supriya kevino rotarian dr surya prabha rotarian dr j sherly rotarian professor dr aisha and dgn rotarian dr tina andini for their valuable insights on education health leadership technology and collaboration for the empowerment of girls we have got a lot of information which will truly help the participants in this program we also thankful to rotary leaders from other districts and also from other time zones pdg rotary shelly okabe rotary anita rambelo from madagascar in rad 9220 rotary sharmila nagaraj from london Rotary and Dominica Federer from Jamaica. The interactive session allowed for engaging conversation was very good, and also we appreciate the active participation of the attendees. Finally, our heartfelt thanks to the president and members of Rotary Club of Hyderabad for hosting this webinar. We also thankful to Rotary and Sujada Sabarina who rendered Rotary invocation. AG Rotary Sali Kumar who introduced DG Rotary Sumitran and also to Rotary Samir Mohan director of the changes for the technical support your presence and contributions have made this webinar a meaningful and impactful one let us continue to work together empowering girls and creating a brighter future for all thank you thank you Rotary and Bina Jay Prakash for your meticulous performance hope you have all enjoyed the program with all your permission i adjourn the meeting good night good night to everyone thank you sir thank you. Nice. happy national girl child day happy yeah. national girl child day yeah. all the girls it is an annual like it is a yes to girls who dream <laughs> who dream big and break barriers good night Thank, thank you, you sir thank, thank you night. for the thank, thank, thank you, you sir thank you, uh, thank thank you dr sabrina sir wonderful. it was wonderful for the opportunity given mm-hmm. yes thank you sir thank you thank you thank really you all thank off. you really hats off to the panel coordinator yeah thank uh, you very sir very ni- nice very nice coordination very nice example of it thank you sir thank you so much <laughs> thank you for the opportunity thank yes it was we, my we pleasure we will meet again with another yes. uh, we are uh, definitely sure, we have to be sure. <laughs> definitely definitely thank you sir thank you thank you all and stay blessed everyone and uh, yes nice meeting doctor, all of you dr surya prabha dr aisha dr uh, all the speakers dr tina uh, all of them we look forward uh, for working in collaboration with Bina, your club uh, oh, sure sure and bina jay prakash all of them thank you thank, thank, thank you professor lohi and for the yeah, nice yeah, yeah. compliment okay, okay. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you dr sujatha proteerin sujatha already is leaving ya hello i said teacher vandha janga boya i said teacher